purposed in his heart. Now listen, my Sabbath school class, we thought about this. Joseph and Daniel, two men who God called into very hard roads to walk on. Joseph, when he was thrown in the pit and sold into slavery, purposed in his heart that he would stay true to his God no matter what happened. Daniel, when he came into Babylon, purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's food. Right? Satan purposed in his heart as well. And he purposed that he would never again give allegiance to Christ. This is the start of the great controversy. This is the start of the war between Christ and Satan. And this is the beginning of the fall of Lucifer and the birth of demons. He makes this decision. Christ is shown once again in his exalted position. Lucifer now goes about to sway the allegiance of the angels. There had never been discord. There had never been disunity or, or disharmony in heaven. This was all new. They had no idea what this was. But they had freedom to choose. And Lucifer, in his subtlety and in his sinful craft, was talking to the angels. And again, Patriarchs and Prophets tells you that what he did is he pretended to be exalting God and trying to bring unity back into the angelic fold while he was actually causing disharmony and causing doubts. He no longer loved these angels that he said he cared so much for. He wanted to draw them away so that they would worship him. Yes? Wasn't he being the first Antichrist? <laughs> yes. Yes. So the uh, present Antichrist is doing the same exact thing he was doing back then. So what he has done now is start to insinuate. What does that word insinuate mean? What's in the middle of that word? Uh -huh. He started to insinuate doubts in the minds of these angels. Now listen, the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 1, I believe, tells you that the dragon drew a third of the stars of heaven with him. In symbolic form, what does that mean? It means that Satan in his rebellion drew a third of the angels with him. Daniel said he looked and he saw 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands of angels ministering around the throne of God. That's how many were left after a third of them fell. Okay? So how many demons are there on this earth? A lot, right? A lot. They loved Christ one day, and then another day they looked at him with distrust. And they loved Satan or Lucifer more than they loved Christ. Lucifer didn't create them, but God did. If angels can fall, how weak are we? But listen. Those angels, can they be redeemed? No. 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 Can you? Yes. Oh, praise God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Because Jesus Christ has made you more powerful than any fallen angel, and he's going to exalt you over the loyal angels when we get to heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, there was a point in time where those angels could be redeemed. Well. And they made a choice. So listen, getting back to our story, I give you all that background to take it back to this story. Where Jesus gets out of the boat. This man who has a legion of angels inside of him, a legion of demons, excuse me, inside of him. Now, don't you think the demons should have made him run the opposite direction? No. Okay, because it tells you in Mark that when they came, they fell at his feet and they worshiped him and said, Why have you come here to torment us? Before the time? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay? Now, a legion, you think they would have had enough control over this guy if they could give him power to break chains, uh, scare all the people, and you think they would have been smart enough to run the other way. But there was something in this man. There was something in this man that knew that his only hope and his only help was that man, Jesus Christ. So they run down and they fall at his feet. And let's pick it up in this week. I'll bring this too close, I promise. Turn to Mark chapter 5. Let's look at verse 4. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. I want you to understand and think about what this picture was like, what this man looked like. When he came out and he rushed at Jesus, and the disciples fled, and he fell at Jesus' feet, this was a man that had fallen to the utter depths of demonic despair. Verse 6, and he saw Jesus from afar and did what? Again, I asked you, why did the demons just make him run the opposite way? Because the man still had enough to make that choice to realize that Jesus was his only help. Now, don't you think the Holy Spirit was also involved here? Yes. That's why the man ran to Jesus. Because the Spirit. Because the Spirit was working on his heart. And who's more powerful? The Spirit or the demons? The Spirit. Never forget that. Never forget that. He saw Jesus from afar and he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice again. Zyrevages tells you that the man made the choice to run to Jesus, but when he got to Jesus and fell on his feet, the demons took control of his voice. And it wasn't the man that was talking, but it was the demons that were talking through him. How scary would that be? Is that real? Yes. A lot of people today think that this is just a story, that that doesn't happen today. Especially in our day and age and our technology. And I want you to understand that this is real, that demon possession is true. And there are a lot of people that you interact with on a daily basis that have these issues. Yes, sir. It happens uh, quite often, and it's covered up under the name of uh, psychological problems. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. He cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? The demons, did they know who this man was? Yeah. Did they know that he wasn't just a man? Now, I want you to understand this. I told you this whole background to let you realize that Jesus also knew them. They were once loyal angels. They were once created specifically to worship Him. The book of John says, who created them? Jesus created all things, right? Jesus as the Creator. He was the active agent in creation. He created the these angels, he brought them into being, and he stands there in their presence, and they understood, and they fell at his feet. Demons, and this world rejects him, and they take his name in vain, and they make a joke out of him. This is why you're the salt and the life of the world. This is why you need to continue to be strong in Jesus Christ and be a witness for him, because it is us that shows the world that Jesus is real, that His power is true, and that we are His children. Amen. Listen to this. I implore you by God. You ever think you hear a demon say this? I implore you by who? I implore you by the Father. Don't torment us. Uh, I believe it's in Luke. It says, don't send us into the abyss. Uh, there's something that I, I've looked at this word, and this word, the abyss, that's spoken of in Luke, is, is not in Strong's Concordance. 
Uh, it's the same word that the earth was without form and void. Void. Okay? That's the same word, same meaning. Jeremiah sees the earth uh, like a drunkard as if it was going to and fro without form and void. The same word. Void. A empty place. These demons did not want to go into whatever this abyss was. And Jesus had the power to cast them there, to tell them, go, and they would go, right? Now listen. So they worship at his feet, and these demons are trembling because they do not want to be destroyed. Two things here for you to understand. One, the power of Jesus. Two, demons know that they have an end. The Bible tells you that Satan goes about like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour because he knows his time is what? Short. 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 They know the end game, and they know it's coming soon. That's why you see all these uh, problems, disasters, confusion in the world today. Okay? And yet we as his people look and go, eh, you know, Jesus hasn't come in 2,000 years. I don't think it's going to come in my lifetime. And that's why he hasn't come in your lifetime. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jesus said in a day and an hour that you don't think he's going to come. Then he's going to come. <coughs> okay? So his demons, this man's on the ground. The demons inside, they're trembling, they're asking him, and they're praying, and they implore by God himself, don't send us into the abyss. And Jesus starts to have a conversation with them. Think about this. In time past, Jesus knew who they were when they were angels. And he asked them, Who are you? And what's their answer? Stop. Now, he asked them, Who are you? And because he asked them a question, they had to answer. So all these demons start to get their strength back and try to recover their self-dignity because they already ran to him, fell at his feet, and trembled. Okay? Get their dignity back and try to muster their courage. And when he asked them, Who are you? What do they say? We are a legion because we are many. Did that matter to Jesus? No. no. Not one bit. It didn't matter whether it was one, it didn't matter if it was a thousand. Jesus had power over all of them. So listen. In the story, Jesus said for them to come out of him. Verse 8, he said unto him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked them, What is your name? And they answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was up on the hill. And they said, Send us to them. Now, why do you think these demons did not want to be sent into the netherland, the abyss, and why they would rather go into the swine? They were afraid. Do not torment us. I'd rather be in pigs than in nothing in the abyss. So listen, how smart are they? You can't. He sends them into the abyss. But no, he sends them into the swine. What did the swine do? The swine freaks out and they, 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 they dive off. They look like a bunch of uh, big, big piggy lemons. <laughs> Over the cliff. You know what I'm saying? Over the cliff, into the water. Where do they go after that? <laughs> Demons don't drown. Where'd they go? But whatever it was, it was better than going into the abyss. Okay? So listen. The people who were taking care of the pigs see this. And go back to the townspeople who owned the pigs and said, you know, uh, all your pigs are dead. And this is a big farming business right there. And, and, and your profits are gone. And everything is done. And it's, it's all because of this man who's on a beach. And so those people who own the pigs come out and they see Jesus. And they see this man who caused them torment night and day. Again, the Spirit of Prophecy tells you that you couldn't walk along the road that went by the tombs and went by the shore because they would attack you. Okay? They couldn't keep them bound in the city. And so they came out 
And they looked and they saw all their pigs and their <laughs> their livelihood was gone. Now what did they say to Jesus? <laughs> Please, they implored him. What does that word implore mean? Begged. Strongly begged him, please leave us because if this is what you can do, we don't want any other disaster happening to us. Okay? Now they saw these two men sitting there clothed and in their right minds. Clothed and in their right minds. And that made no impression on them. They were more worried about their security. And they asked Jesus to leave. And Jesus said, okay. Because he will never force himself on you. That's the difference between Jesus and Lucifer. Lucifer will force himself. He will use coercion. He will use pain, torments, whatever. Jesus uses love. And love is wrapped up in freedom and choice. Okay? So, he asked them to leave. The two demoniacs who now are in their right mind beg him. Take us with you. We want to be with you. We want to be in your presence. I don't want to ever leave you again. Now, do you think that these two men fell into sin when they became possessed? Again, the desire of ages gives you a little insight into what happened to them. They made choices and they opened their hearts and their minds up by sinful practices to demonic uh, entities and the more they fell down this path the more degraded they became and the more possessed they became to where it wasn't just one, two, or twelve but a legion and when Jesus cast them out they understood that their only savior was this man Jesus Christ and they begged him to let them go with them. And Jesus said, what? Yeah. No. So let's pick up our story. This is where we'll end. No, I didn't hear that. Amen for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Verse 15. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told them, this is verse 16, how it happened to him, and how, and who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Verse 17, then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, what? Go home, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion, compassion on you. Is that the end of that story? No. Did Jesus ever go back to that region? Yes. And when he went back, were the people ready to meet him then? Yes. Because they were Jesus' witnesses. Amen. The power of Jesus Christ. I bring this story to you to tell you, number one, that you, just like this man, are witnesses for Christ. And number two, that Jesus wants you to witness just like this man did. Okay? I've got more to say, and we'll say it next week. We'll pick this up. Our closing hand this morning is hand number 340.
you sound when you sing loud and with passion on Very good. Thank you very much. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to come here to church. Father, I pray that you will continue to have compassion on us the way you had compassion on the demoniacs. Father, I pray that as we depart here this morning, that you will give us the strength, the grace, the courage to face this world as witnesses for you so that they may see Jesus in us. Father, I pray that you use us according to your wisdom and grace. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 